Greetings from Podcastville. It's Thursday, the 21st of February. Before we get this party started, I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about Quip. Quip is one of the most important things we do for our health every day is brushing our teeth, believe it or not. Yet most of us don't do it properly. Quip is a better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers. Quip was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and even enjoyable. You know why I love Quip, to be honest with you? I love traveling with it, and I love the timer on each side. It's tremendous. So do me a favor. I love Quip, and I want you to love them too. They're backed by over 20,000 dental professionals, and Quip starts at just $25. If you go to getquip.com slash Joey right now, you'll get your first refill pack for free with the Quip electric toothbrush. Okay, listen. There's nothing out there like that. It's got a built-in two-minute timer that pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides. When was was the last time you had a toothbrush like that? This is as good as it gets. So do me a favor. Go to getquip.com slash joy right now, and you're going to get your first refill pack for free with with an Equip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack for free with getquip.com slash joey. The church is also brought to you by Onnit. When it comes to supplements, on is the way to go, okay? I can't do nothing for you with the club bats or the kettlebells, but as much as Alpha Brain, Shroom Tech, or Shroom Sport, I'm here for you. Go to uh, onit.com right now and press in church, boom, and get 10% off. Take this motherfucking mule, Lee. Ali Sadiq in this motherfucker. You got the Christ killer. It's Thursday morning. <laughs> Whatever you need to do, you got to do. I'm 56, and I'm still slinging dick, all right? That's all that matters. 56 and still slinging dick. It's official. Ali, what's the story? What's the haps? Oh, man. Um, Jesse Smollett is the haps, making black people look bad all over the country. Can you believe that shit? Man, said no. Black and gay. Two people <laughs> at the same fucking time. And and Nigerian. Nigerian, too, because there was two Nigerian immigrants that he let sit in jail. <laughs> that was telling this lies. That's keeping the story up. He's gonna come back with. He didn't. He didn't have to go to the police on Tuesday or Monday. He didn't have to show up on Monday because of the holiday or whatever. <laughs> but I don't think he's enjoying President's Day. No, I've not. never seen. <laughs> They they arrested those two Nigerian guys and then they let like they completely let them go in like three hours. That's the quickest investigation. I've never heard of it. Listen. They told a story. They was like, look, we we not finna go to jail. But they was already arrested. They was already arrested, sitting in jail. And Jesse out there talking, I fought. I fought. I fought him. <laughs> and they looked at it like, who who did he fight? Who, who did he? He paid us a lot. To, what, One of the guys 000. was on the show. <laughs> he's like, he, he, he was, what what did he say? So we, he not, he's not going to come and rescue us? <laughs> I need to talk to the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> he probably did it over text. That's like nah. the craziest thing was when they have like when, that much evidence. When he didn't want to give him the phone. Yeah, that was that was And I knew one. something was up. You can't say nothing no more because the black community will come after you and the gay community will come after you. <laughs> but I remember me and my wife, my wife will vouch. We were talking about it the other night before dinner. Something that don't smell right here. Yeah. And his beating wasn't that severe. It, his face wasn't that beat up. Yo. He had like a little bitch slap and <laughs> You know, he made up a thing. They put a rope around his neck, and they were Trump people. No, that, Jesus Christ. He said a noose. Joe, you got to give what he said. He said they put a noose around his neck. And all I wanted to know, who <clears throat> is walking around with a noose at Chicago at 2 o'clock in the morning at negative 25? Coming from a former person that used to rob people. I promise you I'm not going to rob you. I'm not guest robbing nobody and goddamn negative 25. I need to know that you have a double bag of illegal money that I can take from you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't know if you thought this over. The last thing a Nigerian knows how to do is tie a knot. <laughs> Especially a fucking noose, okay? The last thing a brother even fucks with is rope. You can't show rope to a brother. They get all nervous and shit. So he's my Fishing line, yes. A oh. noose, no. Kamaru Usman's gonna people, come beat you up now. I'm telling you, dog. What do you mean they can't? They don't know how to tie knots. Black so. people, when you they, you never seen a black boy scout, have you? They have. They're, they're they don't pirates, like the knot test. No, they don't like the knot test. Not you. You've never seen, seen a, a black kid in the black boy scouts. <gasps> Once they start tying those knots, that's racist. We don't well know how to <laughs> sail a knot. That's what they hung oh. our ancestors with and shit. You'll never see a black boy scout. 
You'll never see Mr. Williams let his kid be a Boy Scout. He yeah. knows those are racist in training and shit. Even though there's a thousand of them, but we gonna, I'm gonna go with John. You shouldn't be a boy, a black Boy Scout. I'm just gonna say. I'm that. telling you right now, you never seen a black Boy Scout. They're either gay or KKK. Those little kids. They either come out to be gay or KKK. Either the oh. fucking troop leader fucks them in the muffler. Sandusky stuff. <laughs> ah, not in the muffler. Sandusky style. Ooh, and you gotta get out. It's like doggy style. They fuck them in the tent, and they send them out into the wilderness. What do you think is gonna happen to these poor kids? You think they're gonna survive? They're gonna move to Santa Monica Boulevard. That's that's close. Get you some roller skates. Yeah, get some roller skates with the gap band. <laughs> You'll never see a black boy scout. Go ahead. Oh. Go up to the picture of the fucking boy scout. <laughs> see if you ever see a boy scout. Let me Google it's it. in their fucking DNA. They're not allowed to do that shit. <laughs> it's like Jehovah Witnesses don't stand up for the flag. Black people don't want to know nothing about that shit. There ain't no black boy scouts. Man, the thing was when he said that he went home and left the noose around his neck for 42 minutes until... The police got there, and my mind was like, "Wait a minute, was the was the noose was the noose um fucking tight, or was or was it was it a loose noose, or what kind of noose was it that you got around your goddamn neck, still waiting? Oh, oh this is you. I'm trying. Oh, to get, a, this, this oh is my other. god, I thought it was the fence <laughs> no, knocking really. the door down. <laughs> I thought it was narcos and shit. I'm like, what the fuck we got in this office? Because the cops are on their way. They're kicking the fucking door down. With a, with Joey's a, throwing stuff under the table. With a small uh-huh. noose. Just, I'm going to wait for the police. I'm going to wait for the authorities to get here to show them the evidence of the noose being tied around my neck. That was some dumb shit, man. Then they threw, these somebody threw bleach on them. Why would you have, it, the whole fucking story was just fucking stupid. It's just like this, um, Virginia thing, the dude being in blackface. That is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, the, the when he he started explaining himself and got himself deeper in the hole. I went to a Michael Jackson one time, and I had the <laughs> shoes, the gloves. I even, <laughs> I even moonwalked, and then the reporter said, "Can you moonwalk for us right now?" And he looked around, and his wife was like, "His wife was like, nah, I, motherfucker, I, you better not move. <laughs> don't fucking moonwalk. They'll throw you under the prison. Don't moonwalk." Can he he surrender yet? And, no. And then, no. And and then, and then he, number two got his dick sucked twice. And he shouldn't have surrendered. Like I, I was like, this. no, I wouldn't have surrendered I either. Surrender. I was twenty three. I was a dumb fuck. I didn't know it like, insulted people. Black people was like at first. Black people in Virginia was like, get the fuck out of here. Then they realized like, no, no, wait a minute. No, we all right with that. That's not really tearing the scab off of racism <laughs> to us. <laughs> a lot then, of like, other shit that's tearing the scab but off. But what about that. that was the funniest thing ever because. If he retired, if he stepped down, the dude who was going to take his place got his dick sucked two days before, and now another chick came out and said he raped her. Yeah, dude, dude. Dude number three, white dude said, I don't want the job. I got to be honest with you. Back in 1963, I went to a Halloween party, and I put blackface on. Yeah. He, he copped even before the pictures came out. Yeah, so. The- <laughs> How fucking hysterical is that? That is the funniest thing I have ever seen that night when they were like, well, there's the problem. They must be easy to find. Yeah, it's like it's like he, half of the Senate and most of the House should have their fucking yearbooks on deck because most of them went to these Ivy League colleges that, do, that have a tradition of doing blackface parties. So they, they might want to, everybody might want to check their goddamn tree at this point. But the lieutenant governor, this was the goddamn funniest shit in the world to me. I was like, okay. So the lady said, one lady said, I just want to say that he raped me and I don't want to say shit else. I'm not, I don't need no interview. Just know he raped me. Don't ask me no motherfucking questions. When, don't tell, I ain't giving you no time or none of that shit. We'll talk about it when y'all impeaching him. And they, <laughs> they're like, wait a minute. Well, wait, wait. So you want to testify at an impeachment hearing, but you don't want to testify in criminal court. Like, no, I don't need no criminal. I, I want them to lose his job, but I don't want him to go to jail. Uh, and then this is my thing. As men, I hate when I hate when other men come out fucking pandering for shit. Well, I find her credit. I find what she's saying credible. I find what you're saying being so a bunch of bullshit. Because it's one thing. It's out of all the muscles that I have on my body, the one muscle that I don't want in your mouth, if I'm forcing you to do it, is my dick. That's what I don't want. Because everybody gonna hit if you if you put up a fight, everybody gonna know 
that you put in a fight because I'm gonna scream the loudest. Let a woman bite down your dickhead because she don't want to suck your dick. Oh, oh, you forcing me to do this? I don't want to be right. <clears throat> Everybody gonna know why she ain't bite his dick. Why? Why did you blame another person, a, a basketball player at the same school, Duke? For raping you as well. That's right. So you That's got right. raped at the at by two people at the same school, and you still graduated. You a bad motherfucker. And you still took a yearbook picture. <laughs> He's over there smiling in the yearbook and shit. Look, I can't get you can't I can't get into two racial skirmishes at a high school and this think I'm gonna graduate from that shit. I'm like I'm out this bitch. It's, it's a, it's Did they believe up. her about the rape of the basketball player? Or went away. No, nah, it went away because she had all type of messages about how she said she was gonna make the, the shit worse in his life. He's like, I'm gonna make your life worse because she like she don't like to be broke over. She got fucking breakup issues. You break over her, all of a sudden you fucking raped her. Uh. And then the lady, the first one, um, wait a minute, aren't you a district? You work for the district attorney's office. You um. Work for a woman's shelter, a battered shelter. So why you never told nobody that this man raped you at all? But you you had other interviews about things of such nature, but you never brought him up. So you saying that y'all was on a secure floor. You said this happened at the Democratic Convention. And you went up to a floor with him that has feds all over the goddamn floor because they're securing other Democratic people. That's on the floor. You're on the floor with fed that, that's coming and going. As a person that did on some small scale shit, I used to be the, the comic with the Texans. I flew on the plane with the Texans. Have you ever heard of an NFL player raping a girl on the floor, on the team floor? You can't. It's, a, it's, a, it's fucking cops up there. Local cops from that city, whatever city they playing in, that's on the floor, guarding the elevators. So people can't get up and press can't get up. And if any woman come on that floor, you was brought up there by a player. And if you left, the police saw you. They saw you going and coming. Just like at the Democratic team. They saw her coming, going and coming. So if she was raped, she would have told one of the cops on the walk down that this brother just raped. They would have saw it, the fucking feds are every inch of this place. It's like, it's like I never believed the plane ran into the Pentagon. The Pentagon got cameras every inch of the motherfucker. So you gonna tell me that a plane ran into the goddamn Pentagon and we don't ain't no, it's not a napkin, a wheel, a screw, a fin found or nothing. The, so the plane descript, fucking disintegrated, disintegrated into the wall of Pentagon and there's no pictures of the shit coming and going. It doesn't, it, it, it can't make sense when the feds are on the floor. So it's like, what type of fucking mind control he got where you don't look dishuffled. You don't look raped. You ain't say nothing. You don't like on the floor with the fan. Damn, that's deep. But don't nobody want to file criminal charges. They just want him impeached. But no criminal charges because criminal charges will take care of him getting impeached. If he get found guilty, he can't be the lieutenant governor in jail. The job has to go up for sale. He can't be like. I'm, I don't, well, I'm found guilty, but I'm still the fucking lieutenant governor. It doesn't happen like that. So why don't they want to file criminal charges? They all under the, they all under the statute of limitation. All of them. The two. It's oh. a scary fucking world out there, bro. The setup world. That somebody could wake up tomorrow morning and say, Lee Syatt with, was with me at the fourth wall last night and on the way home. He tried to fuck me in the ass. You know, and, and I'll call Lee and go, Lee, what happened last night? And he'll go, I never tried to fuck her in the ass. I, She asked me for a ride home. And I told her I couldn't because she was kind of scary. And this is the kind of shit that happens in real life. Yeah. This is the kind of shit that could happen. And did you go for a rape kit? No, because I was scared. Lee was going to beat me up. You know, meanwhile, you know, this is it. This is our, mar this is our fucking, we've, we've, you know, but then again, if it, if the smoke this fire and if it didn't happen, you're exonerated. It's, that's the but thing. still, it's still in people's but you fucking mind. You don't get exonerated. You get you get the fucking small print behind no obituaries that you when they when they accuse you, you get the front page. You are accused of these allegations, but when you get exonerated, you are behind you behind the obituaries in small print in cursive. They write your shit in cursive. In the paper, like <laughs> when you went to jail, 
Was your name in the paper when you got arrested? <laughs> no, I was hoping it wasn't. No, yeah. my name came out of the paper. I lived in Boulder, so my name came yeah, out of the it. paper. It changed the game. Yeah. Once your name comes out in the paper, once people read something instead of hearing it, it really scares people. People just stayed clear of me. Once your name comes out in the paper, wow. Yeah, I didn't. I never wanted to be in the paper. No, no not like no, not no. like that. I won't. I didn't want it to be in print that I was out here being a street pharmaceutical rep. <laughs> yeah, but I'm embracing it now. Now I'm. I'm you know, I try not to tell stories because I was getting a little irritated. Well. People thought that that's all I did. Like, you know, it took me a while to tell, even tell a prison story. So <clears throat> then I just started embracing it. Like, yo, fuck it. I'm going to just do the story. And if people want to ask me questions, I'll talk about it. But it's the it's the questions that people ask you that piss you off a little bit. Like, this is the number one question that pissed me off. So were you, um, did you, did you um, find humor in jail to protect yourself? And then I say, well, where did you get that from? Like, what make you think that that can happen? Um, a kid in a play movie, House Party 2. People have believed that shit <clears throat> since, house, since it was said in House Party 2. When that man sitting in jail, kids in the, in the jail cell with him, and, and he say, well, dude, you got to do what Richard Brown said he did. Richard Brown said when he was in jail, he would tell jokes to keep their mind, keep them laughing to keep their mind off his booty. Now, when the fuck was Richard Pryor ever in jail? Never. So the shit can't be true. But it was said in the movie. So that's what people think. And then I asked the question. If I was standing here at six foot three, six foot four, about 280, would you ask? And I said, I'm a comic, same thing. And I did it, started in jail and all the said, Would you ask me that same question? Would you say, did you start doing comedy in jail to protect yourself? You wouldn't think you wouldn't you wouldn't think to say this shit to me at all. But you're looking at um real life, you're looking at a welterweight. 140 pounds, 145 pounds, you're looking at a welterweight. And you think that I need to tell, be humorous in order to protect myself. You looking at, let me tell you, <clears throat> I'm the same size as Bernard Hopkins, Floyd Mayweather, um, again, Marvelous Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Sweet Pea, Penelope Wicker. I'm the same motherfucking size as them. I'm the same size as Pacquiao. So I asked him, like, what in people's mind make you think that I got to be humorous in order to, to protect myself? What, what, what about me that you didn't think that I could protect myself? But I get it. It's some of the stories that I'm telling now that <clears throat> in prison that you real life have to be super aggressive even when you feel like the shit is not necessary because you are, you still an intelligent person. Somebody asks you a question, they don't you didn't answer aggressive enough for you, so they want to put you in a tank, in a protective custody tank. You like I don't need to be in here. I don't even know what the fuck this is. To not want to be in here, I don't know what this is. So now I got to beat somebody up in here for you to move me out of here because I'm saying this ain't where I'm supposed to be but what about me that I didn't I didn't say it what you wanted me to say do you think you can defend yourself here hey man time to tell would you what did you want me to say oh fuck yeah I'm, I'm gonna kill everybody in here <laughs> what did you want me to say just like now as a as a grown man what do you want me to be like I don't want to be extra aggressive because when I am being extra aggressive, then I say the shit like this. I probably the only in my mind, I, and I'm in a room with other people. I'm like, you know, I'm probably the only person in this room that actually took somebody's breath from them, but they don't, where they don't breathe no more. I'm probably the only person. I'm like, I'm the probably the only person here that's that's thinking about stabbing multiple people in here if something go. Like, I'm probably the only person here that's that's fixing my mind for problems at this goddamn gala. We had a gala and in my mind something something can happen. I got to be able to, you know, be able to maneuver out of this. I'm probably the only person with these fucking defects in my in my brain because of the situations that I've been in incarcerated. And I've always protected myself in that, but don't ask me no fucking stupid ass question like 
did did I use? I said, because ain't no fucking stage in there. Ain't nowhere in there. It's, it's a comedy program. And I was just a fucking humorous, sarcastic dude. Just like I am on stage now. <clears throat> so it's no stage. It ain't no fucking time. Eight o'clock. Y'all know I'll leave doing a show at eight. <laughs> like it, it, was, it wasn't like that. But people ask you these fucking retarded ass questions. I can see if somebody asked you, like, for me, did humor. I knew six months before I got sentenced I was going to jail. I didn't want to accept it. I thought I was going to go in there with my cute ass and humor the fucking judge at the sentencing. That's what I thought. My attorney had done everything he could. He did a great job. I plea bargained, but I kept pushing the trial back to the sentencing date until one day they called out of the blue and said the judge says he wants to get this off his docket. You get the sentence next Monday. And then it came to me the reality. I was swimming. I was hitting the bag. I was riding the bike. I was preparing myself mentally. I didn't accept that I was in prison for about a week. For about a week, you don't accept it. After you get sentenced five days, four days, and for four days, you're beating yourself up, and then you just let go and breathe and say, I'm going to put this in God's hands, and I'm just going to have the best time I can in here. Did I use humor to make my time go easier? Fuck yeah. By doing stand-up? No, in my head. You know, you got to watch what you say in there. Exactly. You got to walk a certain way in there. You got to keep your eyes a certain way. You got to, you can't let a motherfucker get away with zero, zero. point zero. Not zero point zero. Does that come back into my life from time to time? Yeah. I don't let a motherfucker go past point fucking zero. Point zero. And nobody understands that unless you're in it. A couple weeks ago, bro, I went to New York with my wife and kid. I took the ferry over to New York, did my shit in New York, went to take the ferry back. Bro, you know me, Ali. Lee, you know me. I'm calm. I don't bother nobody. I keep my mouth shut. I'm standing on a motherfucking line, Ali, with my daughter in my right hand. There's maybe a foot between me and some lady, and some dude just cuts right in and walks past me. And as he was walking right here, Ali, I went right back to 1987 in that prison, and I elbow shouldered him. And he went, and he looked at me, and I go, excuse me. And he looked at me for a second, and he goes, excuse me. And then he stepped back and just kept looking at me, and I kept looking at him, and we gave ourselves about a minute, and I go, is there a problem? I let go of my door, and I go, is there a problem? And he goes, there's no problem. When the ferry came, he got on the ferry. I got back there, I sat down, I apologized to my wife, but I got that from prison. Yeah. Not zero. <clears throat> zero. Not right. zero. Not zero. Before it even comes out of your mouth, not zero. That's how I was raised. That's how men were when I was growing up. Not zero. Not past zero. So when me and when people ask me questions, I hey man, you know it wasn't like that X, Y, and Z. Then you ask me another stupid ass question. So now I'm, then it clicks. Yo, man. You want a bunch of cliche shit? You what you what, what, what you want? You want me to rewrite the movie script that you got in your fucking locker? That's it. <laughs> that's on your laptop or something? Cause you it's like you probing me for dumbass answers. That's you know, and that's that's that mentality of that prison mentality is fucking. You can't let nobody get away with it. Not inch. zero. Not like you. You can't say no slick shit and me not respond. Like what? 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 Like I don't let you get past nothing now. I should, you know, as you know, over the years. I let people, I let people. I, I, I calm down. I put my guard down just to let them. You I'll have let to. them. You have to, just to let, to see how far they think they could push, to see how crazy they fucking really are in their mind. I didn't put the guard down and the shield, and I'm, try, I'm trying to be this loosey, goosey type of person, and this shit just result right back. Cause you can't top. You be like, yo, you know something? Get the fuck out of here. I don't want to be this person. I I don't want to be. I don't want to be carefree. Yeah. <laughs> this too. This shit comes with a lot. With a lot, man. You know, like it, in this business, man. So many mis. So you, any fucking mistake you make, 
you know, like the Kevin shit with the with the Oscars. I was like, that was some corny shit. Like you, who sat down and went back through all them fucking tweets and shit to find that? It's like it's like they try not to give people, you know, what they deserve due to fucking language, man. As a comic, man, we say what we want to say, give or take. You know, good or bad. I said something before. Did you get insulted when I said no black people in the Boy Scouts? Mm -mm. Not at all. There are people that are going to find that insulting. Yeah. And, and that's not insulting to me at all. I think it's a joke and it's true. I, I was in the Boy I was a wee blow for about two weeks. <laughs> not one black dude signed up and it was in the fucking Bronx, okay? Yeah. Not one black dude signed up. They didn't have the heart to. I remember Mr. Williams told Jasper in front of me, he ain't going to be no motherfucking Cub Scout because I was a Cub Scout first. I didn't like it either. But my point is that there's people out there looking for that now. That guys like you and I understand one thing. Second chances are a motherfucker. Sure. Okay? Not a lot of people understand the second chance concept in this country. Second chances got me to where I'm going. Okay? Got me here. Mm -hmm. Got you here. So how did you feel a couple months ago? Let's just talk about that. When they were going after that motherfucking judge for covering the chick's mouth in college, all right? Motherfucker's been a judge for 30 years, whatever the fuck he is, never got in trouble again. And you mean to tell me you're gonna come now to talk to me about something he did in 1982 that he covered some chick's mouth, which is all bullshit, it was all political shit. If you understand the nitty gritty, dirty politics that's going on in this country, you'll understand what's going on now. Where three women came out, remember they discredited the one he raped the one at Harvard or Yale or wherever the fuck he went to, but the main one with the glasses. See, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, that was his name. That motherfucker Kavanaugh. But what they were really mad about was some abortion bill that he was signing or something like that. The same thing with this governor in yeah. Virginia. That so dude is what, signing some abortion bill. What came out about um, the lady with the glasses, Chris? Um, did, it, did it come out that she was saying anything fraudulent? They can't. They can't prove it either way with her. They can't see the, the the only thing that got me with her was this. <clears throat> you know how when somebody telling the story, and they correct um, a insignificant part, a part that was fucking very insignificant. Oh, okay. Let me correct that. I had on some orange shoes, and the strings were green. I didn't want you to think the shoes were orange, correct. You had that right, but you said the strings were black. No, the strings were green. And then go on. Oh, I didn't I didn't remember that. You you are correct. She was doing the technical shit that I find to be credible. He was doing the I'ma try to talk louder than everybody to make you believe me. Now do I think he did it? One hundred percent. You, you're a young white kid drinking fucking beer. You drunk. You First of all, you're a white boy drinking beer at a goddamn clubhouse underage. I know goddamn well you did something. I've been, I've been to school with white boys drunk. I know a thousand of them get drunk and do all type of fucking weird ass shit. Thousand of them. So nine times out of the ten, you probably, it's like, it's like trying to say you a black dude and you was, you was full of fucking Hennessy and you didn't cuss nobody out. So wait a minute. You were full of Hennessy and you didn't say one curse word. Oh, you's a fucking lie. You just goddamn lie. Hennessy make you curse. That's 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 in the bottle. It's like you pour a drink and it got curse words in the liquor. Man, it doesn't it doesn't transpire. So I knew I I don't I just didn't like him. As his whole fucking well, his demeanor. demeanor. His demeanor, his demeanor was like, not well. It was like, yo, you a lion. Well, he's uh, what's shit. that shit they call? He had that bit of air to him, that aff uh, affluenza. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause see, the one thing about the dude in Stafford, so the dude in Stafford rapes the girl swimming. The judge sends him to apologize. He said, "I don't want." He said, "The man said he didn't want to ruin his life." Well, you fucking wanted to ruin mine when I was a, a drug dealer at 19. You that you try to throw all the time at me. He people, man, I some of this shit I just don't I don't get. Like cops shooting unarmed people and not getting nothing happening to them. That's some fucking weird ass shit. Like anytime shit go awry and you the responsible person, 
you're the one that's supposed to be the responsible person. It's like this is this is your podcast. It's like me coming in and decide not to talk about none of the shit that you want to talk about. And then somebody said, well, Joey, Ali was being difficult in that podcast. And, you know, and you was just letting him talk about, well, I couldn't, con- I couldn't control the conversation. Like, but you wouldn't say that. You would be like, yo, that motherfucking Chuck, I, you, I kept turning the shit back to where it was supposed to. You know, it, you're not going to let me come in and just do what the fuck I want to do on your podcast. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so I never get people saying that they didn't have any control over something. You had some sort of control, some type of authoritative control over it. As a, as a cop, you're a professional. You're not supposed to have the same temperament as some regular ass Joe on the street. You're supposed to be able to be more tolerable of anything because you are a professional that's trained in that. If you, I've seen a cop, I'm cursing, Saying I'm, he just looking at me and asked me straight up, are you done? No, I ain't motherfucking done. You know what I'm <laughs> and I said the rest of what I wanted to say. So you done now. Here's the thing, Ali. Being a cop has changed dramatically Yeah. in 30 years, okay? When I was a young kid, if Ali grew up in North Hollywood, he would become a North Hollywood cop. Which means you got roots in the community, you know where all the knickknacks of the community are, and now you're the beat cop. You're the low man on the totem pole. The beat cop is the biggest crime deterrent there is. Because I know you're going to be back here in 43 minutes. Whatever I got to do has got to be done in 43 minutes. 43 minutes. Now that guy becomes a detective in North Hollywood, and so on, and so forth, and so on but he knows the streets. Now, these cops, I, Lee's a nice guy. Lee could have became a cop, okay? Get Lee after high school, he goes to college, he gets out of college, he doesn't know what he wants to do. He could become a cop. What if, you know, yeah, you could train all you want at shooting a fucking target, but unless you know the game, unless, you know what, man? Half the people that are dying shouldn't be dying. They should all be getting shot in the leg. Mm. Ali poses a threat to me and he's got a knife. I'm not going to shoot him in the head. I'm going to shoot him in the goddamn pinky toe. Like Eddie Murphy shot the, the yeah. chick in the pinky Belarus. toe and put you down. Put you but will I do that foot. under pressure? Will I do that when there's police car lights? Can you do that when there's fucking cameras out? And everybody got a motherfucking camera. You know, nothing is right now. If I see you, if I get out of my police car and you're doing this with a fucking knife, you're not coming at me with the knife. You know, you're just doing like this. There's mental health issue. There's a thousand things. What's wrong with shooting a motherfucker in the leg? What's wrong with your taser? What's okay, with, the taser. What's wrong with finding out? That's what we're going through. So people yeah. are panicking. You know, you go for your cop. Bro, we've seen, we've seen crimes that they should put the cops under the prison. That dude who shot that black dude in the fucking, in the fucking head fucking at the truck. In the car. In the car. That's the worst. That's the fucking. He should have been put under the jail. The dude a couple weeks ago on the mall in Texas that he pulled out his gun and they shot him. I can't. I don't know if I'm a cop. I'm running in. I hear people yelling and screaming. There's confusion. Austin, I look and I see a brother taking out a gun. Put it down. You know, put it down. What if that put it down? He just turns at me. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's military trained. I don't know what the motherfucker is. So there's, there's a, uh, but we this, cannot, we're not there. In Texas, what's crazy is, as a, I don't understand cops in Texas, when you know a lot of people have gun licenses, you going in, are, are you going in firing on the white guys that you seeing with guns? And that's the crazy shit, because these are the mass shooters. I'm still confused on how in the fuck are we even considered dangerous? What's the last thing a black person done? Name it. Jesse motherfucking Smollett. We lied and said this motherfucker attacked. <laughs> That's it. What's the last motherfucking violent crime that we have done? Maybe the sniper like 15 years ago. Remember that guy? That motherfucker 15 years ago. The DC sniper. Name a, we, we don't have no law. We ain't got no fucking goddamn. We ain't kidnapped no whole bunch of fucking people. We, we don't have no drug roots. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers done rapped about all them. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't have sh- what well, goddamn. The only thing we've done would had Obama. That's it. We ain't done a motherfucking thing. How are we still the number one fucking predator? 1,600 mass shootings. We have done none of them. Not one. Not even a tan motherfucker done it. Not even a tan one. Not every it. time there's a mass shooting, every black person in America goes, Ooh. <laughs> Shh, we ain't getting the blame for that motherfucker right there. These these crazy white people. Now I get it. I get it. How much of it do you think of is it is it race versus economics? Like, like because that's what what always so, so shows to me in like court is like the guy who has money, like the affluenza, is gonna get away with it. It doesn't really even matter. Like the race matters maybe a little bit. It, it it I don't in mass shootings. I don't know how the race would matter in that when it's when it's like yo, it's a it's a weird. I don't know what the fuck matters no more. Because it's so many unarmed, unarmed African American people getting shot, versus you go in and shoot. How, how okay, the mass shooting in the in the in the church, right? He shot nine elderly people. He killed nine elderly people. How in the fuck did you do you arrest him and make sure that he have something to eat? Yeah, and. Every every mass shooting now when it's when it's a person they know who they they know who they going up up they make sure that they go in and they and they make sure they say it all the time you go back and you listen to it we arrested the assailant with no incidents they they make sure they say that with no incident so how the fuck is is this man selling CDs in front of a store how did he how is he dead how is I don't understand, and but then you want to say this man in blackface ripping off the fucking scab and reminding us of slavery and racism in this country? No, that's not the fucking scab that's being ripped off by blackface. I'm I'm well aware of what happens in blackface, but I'm not understanding the why so many. Like you say, you got this, you got this, this dude, this country dude from Alabama or some small town in Texas or some small area. Was just predominantly he just all him he's ever seen. Then you put him in a to patrol a neighborhood of people that he never really dealt with ever in his life. No stock in him, and he has no idea that because I'm talking loud, I'm not fucking mad. I'm just talking loud. I'm not being aggressive because I'm doing this. This is how I talk. You have no fucking training to be around. It's like somebody listening to my aunt and my uncle talk to each other. They mad at each other? No. Who said that? Who's, why you thought they was mad? Because the way they talking to each other? No. She going to tell him shut the fuck up all the time. And he going to say right back, bring your ass in here and do that. You shut the fuck up until I get ready to come in there. They not mad at each other. That's love. That's affection. That's 35 years of that. You know what I'm saying? But in, if you don't know that, you looking at the, on the outside looking like, oh, this is fucked up. Why, he, why they talking to each other like that? Hmm? Huh? You know, we handle things. We handle things a lot, a lot different, according to you know who, who we're rolling up on. Yeah, who we're rolling up on. Well, what well, you know, a lot of people don't. You know, listen. I was on Rogan's last month, and we were talking, and I told him what Harvey was going to do, how Harvey was going to get himself out of this. We're criminals. We know the plan. I got a plan. I used to just go to court just to watch court when I was a kid. You know, I enjoyed it. I really do enjoy the judicial process. People going to court, fucking proving that they're guilty. I love all that shit. I eat that shit up alive. I knew what he was going to do. I knew exactly what he was going to do. Cosby didn't do it. Cosby got more money than fucking God. Cosby should have got three white chicks to go in there and represent him. Or uh, an angry black sister. I found out. Obama's cousin. I found out what, um, how, how he got, how he in jail. How? He got Cosby got cheap on the um on his attorneys. Yeah, you don't all that you, money in the you world. Don't fucking fire the people who got you the hung jury. He walked in there with another jury, but then on the other side of that, did you know that um his wife Camille had had um wrote a, wrote this letter, fucking bad mouthing the um the judge, 
like really talking shit about the judge. And the judge didn't even respond, didn't say nothing. But then the new trial come, the judge, people don't realize he let he let five women who had nothing to do with that motherfucking case testify against Cosby. He allowed he allowed their testimony. Five women had nothing to do with this shit. Not a goddamn thing. The judge, like you, what you don't do if you in a trial, we know this, you don't talk shit about the judge. No. That's what you, that, that's the no. main motherfucker that you don't talk shit. The judge, you don't want to say but nothing bad about the bailiff. That because a bailiff, knowing a, a bailiff can keep, I remember um, missing a court date and the bailiff um, on my behalf spoke up for me. No, nah, judge, he's been here. He's been here every other time. I don't, I, I, um, what is it called when they? Continuance. They, uh, Let's uh, do a bond, continuance. Uh, yeah, or the bond, or the bond. They, 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 they didn't take my bond. They let me keep my bond. I just had to show back up. And fucking ju- the, um, the bailiff, man, the bailiff looked out. You got to know, you got to know the people in the court system, man. It ain't just about, that's, people don't know who in there, who in there, in that guy fucking wait. It's a lot of people in that room that got weight other than your attorney. Cause your attorney is only in there fucking bartering relationships. It's on and let the real work comes when you get ready to go to trial. If you're not going to trial, it's like I'm coming there. I'm like, okay, look, Lee, shit. Did you take yours to trial? Uh, no. <laughs> I was looking at 49 years. <laughs> I wasn't about to take my to trial. They started they me get, with ninety nine. I yeah, wasn't going I was to try. I'm like forty nine. I said, "Fuck you." I went to I went to the law library. I wanted to see what what did my stuff start at? What is the statute of limitations of my? I'm like, yo, where do I start? Because you know, different different possessions, different cases have different amount. Like you would get caught with a certain amount. A possession is one thing versus a delivery and a conspiracy. Conspiracy starts at twenty. Delivery starts at fifteen. <laughs> possession starts at five. So I'm trying to determine. I really wanted to go in there and telling people that I I was in possession of five kilos of dope, like I was a smoker. And <laughs> my attorney, that's a tough one to sell. My attorney was like, five, "So you want me to tell him that you was using five kilos? Hey man, I got a habit. I got a, I got a bad habit." <laughs> so he was like, "No, it's gonna be a delivery, a delivery of controlled substance." Now, and I thought What's delivery sales. Yeah, sales, sales, sales. delivery. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, possession. Your user. You know, something. They come in here right now. I got a baggie with an ounce of Coke with nothing wrapped. It's possession. If they come in here and I got a scale and a couple bindles, even if there's nothing in them, then they get me on delivery. On delivery. Conspiracy is if it's me, you, and Lee. If Lee gets the kilo and he gives, we chop it three ways. And then yeah. that that's conspiracy when it's a network of people. Like and conspiracy to deliver control stuff. Yeah, that's a motherfucker right yeah. there. <laughs> I had kidnapping one and kidnapping two and aggravated robbery, second degree burglary. And then they threw a thing Hi. called crime of violence in that if you get convicted, they double your sentence. Mm-hmm. So it's times two. So I had to think hard on this. I'm going to see the guy kidnapped Saturday night in Tucson. (laughs) The guy I kidnapped in 1988, 87, he's coming to the show Saturday night in Tucson. This Saturday. Hysterical. He's been waiting for the last month. He's been calling me three times a week, and I won't answer his call to torture him because he didn't show up to Tempe last year. So I haven't been answering the phone. He finally hit me up on Facebook. He's like, motherfucker, you coming to Tucson? I'm coming. So the dude I kidnapped in 1987 will be in the show in Tucson this weekend. So you're in Tucson this weekend? Yeah. How crazy is that, though? That's crazy. So for me, I knew he was a loose cannon, that he was going to disappear. So that's why I kept postponing it. I kept paying my attorney to push it back because the victim would disappear eventually. He would either move to Mexico and then there'd be no fucking court. No, he showed up. They didn't let him testify, though, because he had robbed the hospital. He jumped out. This motherfucker got a DUI, cut his head open. They took him to the hospital. While he was in the hospital, he broke into the pharmacy, took the liquid cocaine and a bunch of pills, and jumped out the motherfucking window (laughs) and then didn't show up for court and had a warrant out for his arrest. When I kidnapped him, 
He had a warrant out for his arrest. So do you understand if they would have taken this to trial? Witness, yeah. If I would have taken it to trial, mm. uh, it would have been close. Close, close. Too close to risk 40 fucking years over. Boy. Yeah, too close. I just almost close. got jury duty and being <laughs> seeing what the kind of people they picked. Like, there's people who just get bad luck. Like, they've gotten jury duty four times. And like they're in charge of your life. That's I, I like it's, it. Almost makes more sense to just have the judge do it, because at least they're supposedly smart. The people who I was in the room with for jury duty, it terrified me. Like the thing that they were in charge of someone's life. Yeah, it's it's a big thing. People being there, wanting to go, not not listen to all the evidence. Just imagine we have we have a decline in educational population. So now if they if you getting um, picked. You're getting judged by these people. These people, these new people, become your jury. The same people who can't pay attention <laughs> without they fun. They got a small window of attention. A small these attention motherfuckers band. think Kim Kardashian's a good singer. <laughs> yeah, like, oh. and, and, and Kardashian's that, and, a great singer, and she's a public figure for the world. So these are the people who I'm like, yes, I would like to hear all the facts. <laughs> You know, this thing we did it's the damn we in we in a we in a tight spot. I remember the first because he, Kidwell got arrested first. He got caught with Vela in the trunk of the car. So he got the public attorney. So when I walked in there, I knew exactly that. that's beautiful for me. Because now I can't get a public attorney. I gotta get a court appointed real motherfucking attorney. And the state pays them because if a public attorney handles me, it's conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. So when you get involved with two or three people, you shut your mouth until you find out one guy got a public attorney. Let them get the public attorney. You're going to go with a real motherfucking attorney. A real one. And I went with a black dude. His name was Sonny Flowers. That was his real name. But he was black only in skin color. His soul was whiter than white. And he was in there selling my fucking soul. And I remember he called me a week after I bailed. And he's like, good news. We've gotten you a great deal. It's nine years. And, I, and he goes, and you're pleading to kidnapping too. And I'm like, Mr. Flowers, are you fucking crazy? And he goes, I think it's a great deal for you. you nine years is perfect for what you did. I go, there's no violence. They got no proof. Of, but I was just buying time. I was just trying to get all my money in order to get a real attorney. Yeah. So I was just trying to get my shit in order to get a real attorney. Then I went in there and started like a fake argument with him because he kept telling me, you don't understand. My grandmother was the first black woman to ever graduate CU Bowl. And I'm like, you don't understand. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to get fucking lynch mobbed in this motherfucker. And you're telling me about your fucking grandmother? I don't want to hear about your fucking grandmother one more goddamn time. And he's like, nobody talks about my grandmother. You know? <laughs> You'll never be a Boy Scout. You'll never be a Boy Scout and all this shit. <laughs> and then he threw me out. He wrote a letter to the judge. And then I had to go see the judge. I'll never forget this. I had snorted. I must have snorted nine eight balls <laughs> on a Sunday night. And I had to see the judge at 10 in the morning. I went in there sweating bullets. Oh. Ali, I know you've gone through this. I go in there. I forget what the judge's name was. He was bald. He was a little bit of a hard on. And I went in there and had to explain my situation. He goes, what happened? And I go, I didn't, we didn't come to an agreement. He goes, Mr. Diaz, I, I want you to get sentenced. And I go, listen, I wasn't getting along with him. He goes, all right, you have 14 days to get new counsel and come in here. I go, okay, thank you, Your Honor. And he goes, by the way, before you go, please go in my chambers and check with my clerk for a date. I've been to court a thousand times. That was fucking weird, Ali. Hmm. Before you leave, go in my chambers. This is in front of everybody. He goes, go outside and go in the first office and check with my uh, clerk for a date for two weeks. I was like, something don't sound right. I was by myself. I had no attorney with me. So I walk out. He's like, go ahead, go away. And I walk out and I go in there. And when I open up, there's a lady there. And she goes, Jose? And I go, yeah. She goes, hold on one second. And she opened up a door, and two feds came out. They're like, Mr. Diaz, we're fucking such and such. 
were from fucking uh, the DEA, and this is County from Aspen, and they started showing me pictures of me on a balcony, oh. showing me pictures of me in a car, showing me pictures of me giving a guy like a package, hmm. and they were watching me up in Aspen, and they're like, this is how you could take care of this whole deal. We can, no, they said to me, if you give us your dealer in Aspen, we'll make this situation go away, and we promise you you'll do it amount of minimal time. And I'm like, so wait a second, what you're trying to tell me is I'm going to sell my soul and I still got to do time. <laughs> so I thought about it first. And if you know anything about me, you know I had to fuck with them a little bit. <laughs> I had to fuck with them a little bit. Gotcha. I took the dude's card and I said, I'll get back to you. And then I would call him like every four days. Listen. I seen a license plate the other night, like six two six. Like, was somebody was busting my balls? Like, if there was a drug dealer that I owed money to. <laughs> oh. I would call this motherfucker and say, "Look, I just seen a suspicious thing go in my neighborhood with this count." You know, I wouldn't say nothing to nothing. You're about to go to jail twice, <laughs> and you're still torturing the police. Oh, please, you know me, dog. I don't give a fuck. I could go on for years torturing a cop. The, I had a cop that was so mad at me, Alisa Deke. This motherfucker tried to crack this coconut <laughs> that he showed up on my wife's side for the divorce hearing. That's how my, you ever see I Dream a Genie? <laughs> I Dream a Genie is not about a white dude with a genie. It's about a white dude and another white dude who torture Major Bellows. They just torture him. He'd walk into an office and they're having an orgy. Then he goes to a report <laughs> and he comes back and they're really a bakery. I had this cop. <laughs> I had this cop. That dude just retired. Oh. That dude just retired. I would still send him flowers. Oh, I no. would send him Valentine's cards. I would send him Christmas cards. <laughs> I sent that motherfucker Christmas cards five years after they, I got out of prison because I knew he hated me so much. Man. So he, why are you antagonizing him? Because fuck hate him. him. Because oh. I hate him. I want him to fucking go to his grave thinking about how much he fucking hated me <laughs> and how he couldn't do dick to me. Because he, he kept telling me the thing, you're going to do 50 fucking years. I'm going to make sure of it. And I'm like, dog. God damn it. <laughs> I call that cop on you. He's been farting on me. What can you I know. <laughs> what can you do? Charge <laughs> chemical warfare. <laughs> dog, I tortured that motherfucker, Ali. I tortured. Remember, Ali, that dude started on me for a credit card fraud. <laughs> he started on me at 85. <laughs> when he was a patrolman, he thought he was fucking Snoop. Snoop, I was, I, I I burglarized the mall with a credit card, and then my stupid Cuban ass. See, I went to the mall first looking for a job. And I didn't <laughs> Lee, get you it. okay, Lee? <laughs> no, I'm just thinking about this story. It's amazing that he's free. Like that. It... <laughs> Ali, I mean, no I, wonder he has such a fun time. He's like, I'm free. Ali, I terrorized this mall first looking for a job, and when I didn't get the job, nobody would give me a job. I took a credit card. Like 10 credit cards and just destroyed that mall. Bro, I went into that mall one day, walked into the radio shack. Do you know I picked up a CD player? One of those DVD players, wrapped the wire around. You know how you unplugged it? It was, yeah. the, it was the sample. I took the fucking thing and walked out of there with the sample. I destroyed this mall. They were not ready for Joe Diaz, but I tormented them with the credit card. I bought something in every fucking store in that mall. This mall was three floors. I spent money in every, every store in that mall. I kept throwing the cards away and taking them and going back. I tormented this mall. I had merchandise all over that fucking apartment. The one day I'm working, I get a call from Foot Locker. They want to hire me. In that mall? In that mall. So I take the job at Foot Locker with my stupid Cuban ass. I'm 21 years old. And I'm at Foot Locker robbing up a storm, right? Robbing like a motherfucker. And one day this Chinese family comes in, one of those yin yang envelopes the Chinese New Year envelopes, and they're trying on shoes, and I'm looking at that envelope and shit, and all these Chinese people are trying on shoes, and I clip the envelope and put it in my pants. It had to be like fucking, I don't know, $2,000, $3,000. I went right in the back of the place, and I opened up a bag of uh, size 13 sneakers, and I put the envelope inside the sneaker, and I went back out there. I just had a weird feeling. And when they went to pay for the sneakers, they're like, what happened to the envelope? Our envelope is lost. What happened? I'm starting to feel bad. The kids are crying and shit. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to hell for this. And all of a sudden, they leave. They came back an hour later with the cops. And they were 
Like we know for a fact when we came in here, we had that fucking envelope. So either somebody stole it or somebody who works here stole it. And there was like three of us, and I'm like, dog, none of us took it. Either you dropped it, you know. But that cop kept looking at me weird. And two days later, that motherfucker comes back and he goes, can I talk to you for a second? He goes, I just got a report that there's a guy that matches your description that bought a bunch of jewelry and whatever. So we're waiting for the cameras to come back. Is this you? You might as well turn yourself in now. This motherfucker came every seven days. He came in for five days with that same story. Every day he come in. How you doing, Mr. Diaz? Have you decided to turn yourself in yet? You know, we got the sizes of the pants and stuff, right? You know we're going to hang the sign. You know, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. They kept coming to Foot Locker, kept coming to Foot Locker. Then Sunday night, the motherfucker knocked on my door. And he's like, you know, we're going to come back here and arrest you tomorrow. We can make this a lot easier. I'm like, dog, if you could arrest me, you wouldn't be here talking this shit. Now get the fuck off my stoop. Then that night I left for San Francisco. <laughs> 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 and I didn't come back for like two years. That was in August of 85. Ali, do you know when I kidnapped that motherfucker in November of 87? You know who I turned myself into? That dude and another cop. And he never remembered Ali. Man, he never. He kept looking at me like he knew me from somewhere. And I, every time I'd go to court, he'd be looking at me and shit. I'm like, when is this fool going to remember that I was the credit card bandit? When he the boulder credit card the boulder credit card the boulder, the boulder credit card band. When is he gonna fucking realize that I'm that dude? He gonna be sitting up one day and just gonna pop into his head like something that you can't remember. Fuck, Joy Diaz. No, I was Damn. at the Comedy Works two years ago, and the feature that opened for me was a boulder cop. And I said to him, I asked him, I said, "Is is that cop still there?" And he goes, "Yeah." I'll ask him about you. Oh, I go send him my love. Because I always send them Christmas cards at the police station. <laughs> so I sent him fucking shit for years. I think I haven't sent them anything in like 12 years, 13 years. I think I sent them something with the longest yard. Go fuck yourself. What have you done with your life, you fucking flat foot motherfucker? Here I am busting out with Adam Sandler. How you like me now? I sent them the trading card. Do you, They had these trading cards and I sent it to them. Do you have... A problem with police. I don't actually have a problem. No, not at all. I don't actually Never have a in my life. Just not a at specific. All. Not at all. I don't like, I like when a cop is a cop. Yeah. I like when a cop talks to me from the heart and I talk back to him from the heart. I hated cops like him because they really thought they were making a difference. I don't want you to be a cop that thinks you're making a difference. You're not making a difference. You're not really making a difference. No. You going after, when you watch those Pablo Escobars and you watch them cheer and shit, I look at you and I feel bad for you. Because you're just plugging one hole in the wall. You don't see that. You're just giving another guy a fucking light. Leave him alone. Shut the fuck up. You're going to act like that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we got him. You know, that shit has always killed me. Those gung-ho cops, they bother me. But cops are the cops. That, like the cops that pulled us over that night. Right. I'm all, I put my hand on the steering wheel. I've never had a problem with a cop other than that cop. Let me tell you something. I got arrested one time on a warrant. I got arrested on a possession of stolen tools thing, and I had a warrant in Bergen County. The cop that drove me from Tenafly to Bergen County Jail stopped and got me Chinese food. That's how good I am around cops. I tell them the truth. My brother's a cop. I admire you guys. You guys are doing a job, and I fucked up. That's the truth about a cop. Yeah, yeah. I got no beef with cops. I don't want to shoot a cop. I got nothing against cops. Cops are, I give my, that's why I don't like this shit that's going on with cops shooting people. And I've always said it. Stop with the shooting of black people. Stop it because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> You're going to get five angry brothers that all train special forces. They're all going to start talking one night and they're going to start sniping on, on a fucking city. That's going to happen. But what, all it takes is two brothers to get together and say this shit's going to end. Call it the Black Panthers reprogram, reboot. <laughs> Call it the Black Panthers reboot. Right. And that's what's going to happen. I'm no fucking Swami from Salami. But it don't take you to even be a genius to know that one day one brother is going to call his cousin and go, hey, they just shot our little cousin in Memphis. This yeah. shit's going to stop. Let's go down stop. to Memphis. Let's get all our little army buddies together, all our little black sniper friends, and let's start picking off motherfucking cops on Main Street. 
We'll pick off a white cop a day until the fucking violence ends. This is going to happen someday. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be in 10 years. But someday this is going to happen because this keeps happening. And people don't understand. And people don't understand. And it's going to take one angry dude, one Tupac motherfucker to say, you know what? I know how to fucking shoot. I could shoot. I could outshoot Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah, I, 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 listen, you know. This football thing I was talking about. Was I talking about? Oh, that, that fucking Kaepernick, man. Ain't that, no, 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 no. no. The shit about this thing about the... I, I CTE? I, I was talking about my CTE earlier, road, yeah. That now, that since white kids aren't playing football no more, more and more, like, more blacks are going to Princeton now. Like, they're allowing it now. Like, fuck it. We don't give a fuck. We need football. Because the NCAA spends more on football scholarships than all other sports combined. Did you know that? Yep. Than all other sports combined. Then what makes the most money? The NCAA spends on fucking football. And now, because of this white kid not playing football shit, that means more black kids and Puerto Ricans are going to be going to the school that you worked hard to fucking get into. Right. And now parents are fucking pissed. This is what this whole thing on real sports is about. That parents are like, wait a second, you're letting these kids in our fucking schools. We pay forty grand a year. Well, that that's also kind of racist. Isn't that's it? very racist. Because then the, they're like some like like. So uh, what you're telling me is they'll they'll pay money to pay keep in. blacks and Puerto Ricans away from you. Well, they, they, sometimes they pay to just get in, like like they'll pay just to oh I'll donate to get a library, so, but I, they didn't deserve to get into Harvard. That's happening too. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. Well, can you guys explain? The, the no snitching thing because I, I mean I, I obviously I've everyone's been told not to That's old. tattletale but then like this thing is happening with this rapper right now with Snoop Dogg like getting mad like this rapper had a whole like 40 years of possible prison time and now he's gonna get probation for, for ratting and everyone to me if, if I was gonna go to jail I'd like it it'd be like yeah maybe I like I can see where tattling is like okay I'm not gonna go to jail now but is it something different? Like, how can people take it so seriously? It's um, it's a co- <clears throat> it's a culture thing in the neighborhood. When no snitching is, don't nobody really want to live under that. They think they do, but you you actually don't. And those days are over. That's when men were men, though. That's when when the streets took care of itself and things would come around. I don't think that there's been a, a actual no snitching situation. Sh- shoot, man, since before Kobe Bryant, like Kobe Bryant snitched on Shaq. Um, Al Sharpton was a fed telling on people. It, it's out, man. Out, so, so I think uh, everybody snitch nowadays. So, Whitey Bulger was a snitch, right? Whitey Bulger was a huge snitch. Like, was a huge snitch for years. Like, for the feds. So, man, I don't... That's that's something... I don't know, man. Here's what my take on it. I got two takes on this. I was raised in a house that you weren't allowed to say nothing. My mother exposed me to everything at an early age. I knew what my mother did. I knew what the numbers were. I knew what drugs were. I was exposed in the early age. Like my first raid, I was five when they raided my mother's house on 89th Street. So at that age, my mother would already tell me in Spanish, Callate la boca, no diga nada. Shut your mouth. No diga nada. Shut your mouth. So as I got, I remember still being like eight and being on 205 West 88th Street. And a beat cop came up to me and told me to scrub something off the floor. And I told him, why would I scrub it off? If I didn't do it, we got into like a very mild conversation and my stepfather had already married my mother and he would talk to me and I remember him walking towards me and he looked at me and in Spanish, he's like, you know, don't say nothing to him, you know, so I was always raised to keep my fucking mouth shut. I came from a neighborhood where, where I played at my godmother's house, you couldn't be a snitch. And then when I moved to Jersey, you couldn't be a snitch. When you get arrested, the first thing you do is to keep your mouth shut. Right. You don't know nothing. Now, I was in a situation where I was facing jail time. They came to me and asked me to make make buys or whatever. Listen, I'd rather fucking stab myself in my heart. I could never, ever, ever do that. Now, there's something else. Okay, if you're asking me about snitching, right. 
I'm not a snitch. I don't know nothing. I don't know even know what the fuck you're talking about. If you're involved, you do your time and you keep your mouth shut. It's not what people think. It's what you know. Character is what fucking, you know, don't let my character ruin my destiny. And character is what you do when nobody else is around. Right. That's why you don't snitch. Now, if I'm a big volume drug dealer, if I make uh, a half a million a year on coke, a half a million a year on gambling, a half a million a year on hot stuff, a half a million a year on construction, everybody is always trying to shoot you down. So, number one, for you to get ahead and to get up in that level, you have some dirty cops. I was a punk drug dealer, and I had dirty cops. Uh-huh. I had a cop that would give me all the guns he confiscated for coke. So any hot <laughs> gun, I'd tell him, any hot gun, get 200 cash. I was just shipping them back east. I remember still this guy coming to my house at 2 in the morning on duty with his jaw going from side to side, and his eyes spinning in his head and asking me for a gram of coke. Now, when you're in that position there, when you're in the million-dollar game, Okay, hmm. there's going to be times like Michael Dowd. Like Michael Dowd told me a story one time. I told him I was going to go on Bo Dito's podcast, which I still owe an appearance on. And he goes, don't say nothing to Bo that you know me because one time Bo and his crew were about to arrest somebody. And we saw the paperwork and we went over there and robbed the guy's drugs. Uh-huh. So when Bo got over there with the rest of the cops, all the drugs were gone and Bo knew it was us. Okay, when you're making a half a million dollars a year from drugs, the last thing you need is Ali Sadiq setting shop over at that funeral parlor. Especially if I'm right here. I need Ali to get with his fucking friends jumping up and down with rap music and fucking cars at night. And we're trying to sell a million dollars here. I got a cop in my pocket. I'll tell him to go over and talk to Ali. Go bust Ali, shut him down over there because he's making a racket towards my business. Mm -hmm. That's part of business. Okay. That's, that's not that's called the rap. That's, 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 part, that's, of that's part of business. That's part of business. Uh, Ali's got a sister. And I went to a club one night and I called her a fucking cunt or whatever. Ali knows me. Ali knows me. We're friends. He knows I'm a drug dealer. He don't want no problems with me, whatever. You know what? He might just, by mistake, put an ounce of coke in my car and make me get pulled over. Okay. That's not a rap. That's part of doing street. That's street business. That's street business. That's colonial, that's part of getting damage. That's part of getting mixed up in the fucking game. If you're a drug dealer and you have any clout or a numbers operator or anything, you have a cop on your payroll. You have a couple cops on their payroll, and they have ears, and they'll come to you and say, "Listen, we just busted this dude Ali, and he's down there ratting." Like cops work like that too. <laughs> so I already know. So I'll call the king of the fucking brothers and go, hey, if you got something going on, Ali, disconnect. Because he's in there rat. Now I just won myself a favor with the brothers. Right. Now I just won myself a favor with the brothers. Because Ali's running with the brothers over on 88th Street. Now I go over there and tell him, hey, Ali rat. How do you know? Because he's in there singing the blues. Who's Copernicus? Me. How do you know who my... I tell you that fucking Ali just ratting on Copernicus. Now they owe me a solid. Gotcha. So it's all on the street. It's all about solids. So is is it more of it's not that you're t- ratting; it's that you're dealing with the cops. Yes, it's that you you've made them a partner, Got it. and now they're your partner. You know, uh, you want to become a drug dealer, right? Right. Like they did this to my friends one time. Like they did this to Kurt and uh, and and uh, D- Danny B. Okay. They fucking went. And they made it, so you. I come to you and I go, Lee, I don't know anybody in Boston. Can you sell me coke in Boston? You're like, yeah, sure, I'll make a phone call for you. So I'll take 30000 cash. And when I get to Boston, you'll call a drug dealer and say, Joe Diaz is at uh, the Ace Hotel Room 432. Go over there and tell him you got a kilo of coke, but just rob him. They'll set you up that way. Fuck. So you use cops as a setup also. Damn, okay. But for me to go into some place and them say to me, well, you're looking at 20 years rat on somebody, they gave me that opportunity in 87. I could have ratted on the people from Aspen. They came in and gave me the pictures. All I had to tell them was three names. And I was like, for what? What's the sense? I'm going to know. I'm going to fucking know. I I guess that this is probably why I never would have made it as a criminal. Cause it, like, it's just a, it's, a, it's a whole different world to me. Like it's crazy to me that you would, 
you spent years robbing drug dealers and taking all their money, but you won't rent them out. They're like, there's just certain lines you don't cross, I guess. And I guess it makes sense, but it's like, fuck. Thank God I didn't get into that. You have to watch your back. And you got to know who you, the animal you're dealing with is. And you got to know what their ammunition is and who they got on the payroll. Because you never know. You know, not every cop is a decent individual. There's some cops that are out there. You, you read about it every week. Cops get DUIs. Cop, they have faults, too. Right, yeah. They're sinners also. They have faults also. So they get hooked on coke being on the job. Well, don't don't police have like a place like they call it like the ranch or something? It's like a a rehab for well, their undercover cops. What or? they do is, yeah, they have they've always had one of those where you you fucking go to you, one thing you get picked up on a conspiracy, right? Right. And here's Ali hanging out with Joe Diaz for two fucking years. Every every bump Ali does, Joe Diaz does a bump with him. Every fucking bump, because I don't know about you. You know, my only in Miami Vice did you sell a kilo to a motherfucker and never see them do a bump in front of you. That's only in Miami Vice when a motherfucker comes with a blue tube and tests the coke and shakes it and looks to see if the coke is yellow. Everybody I did business with had to put a fucking fingernail in there and do two lines in front of me. I got to see you do those two lines, or we're not talking. Damn, okay. But when I got locked up, when I first got locked up, I got locked up in a fed place. And there were motherfuckers, and there was a dude in there that I became friends with that told me right up that he caught a, a conspiracy case and that for fucking three years, he goes, listen, every time I shot, this guy shot with me. And he goes, during the conspiracy case, they separated us, blah, blah, blah. He goes, I finally made bail after a month and a half. And at the trial, the guy walked in. He goes, I couldn't believe it. He goes, my jaw dropped. He goes, this guy, I had done fucking... They were shooting coke. Jesus. He goes, for every time I shot, this motherfucker shot in his vein. There's no way they're going to gain your trust unless they're there with you, snorting. I knew a guy, when I was at the car wash, the undercover cops would get their car washed there. So I got to see what all the cars looked like. And they were all repoed cars. Like when they arrested Ali, and Ali's got coke in the car, if he's over a state jurisdiction, they're allowed to take the car. So they'll take the car from Texas and bring it up to Colorado and give it to the undercover units there. And the cars in Colorado will ship to Houston. So the Houston drug dealers won't know them there. It's very slick. It's very slick. A guy that's a cop in, in North Hollywood and becomes an undercover cop in North Hollywood doesn't do arrest in North Hollywood. He goes to Redondo Beach because nobody knows him. Right. So as a criminal, do you ever trust any like any other criminal? Like, to me, it seems like you can't. Yes. You, I trust criminals more than I trust these fucking people that tell you how nice they are and how, because with a criminal, I know where I stand. Even though okay. they have undercover cops? I know where I stand with a criminal. Okay. I know when a guy goes bad. I know. So I stay the fuck away from him. But I have more luck with criminals than I do. I'm not pointing out Ali. I'm just pointing <laughs> at the air saying I have, I've always done better. Because I know where they stand. I know what to look for. He's a fucking stick-up guy. Now you deal with the... It's, you know who hurts my feelings more? Regular people. When a criminal does something to me, my feelings don't get hurt. Because I knew that he was a criminal. Okay. When, when some idiot promoter tries to... When I call him and tell him I want to do 10 minutes. And he puts my picture up. And, and tries to make money off me. That's a fucking cunt move right there. That's a guy that doesn't know I was a criminal for 20 fucking years. Exactly. So there's people that are sneaky people. Right. They piss me the fuck off more than criminals. Because when a criminal burns me, I know where I stood. I dealt with a criminal. That's what you get. Right. You know, when you fucking, it's like Don King. Don King was a criminal, but you know where you stood. You knew when you hugged Don King, he was going to fucking rape you in the ass eventually somewhere. He don't when you hug Don King, if you're making $10 million, you better know Don King's getting a million of that somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere Don King's getting a million out of the ticket sales, the added charges, somewhere. Don King ain't there smiling. But when you hugged him and you got in bed with him, you knew where you stood. Right. There's people that you do that with, and then they stab you and you go, Jesus Christ. Those are the people that really fucking piss me off. Okay. If Don King came to me right now and he said, I want to promote your new CD, 
and he made the numbers sound right, I would do it with Don King. Because I know he's going to rob me. But he's going to get the CD out, and I'm going to make a half a million dollars with him. Right. Because he's a fucking thief. He knows how to go in there, shake motherfuckers down. He'll go down at me, but put the album in here, I'll stab you in the fucking neck. <laughs> He'll open doors for me that nobody else could open. Do you understand me? So you give him his take, and that's it. He made Mike Tyson a fucking gazillionaire. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's, so it's, 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 it's the it's, motherfuckers it's, that you know, come to us. How many people come to us and they have a, right. a fucking hidden agenda? Oh, everybody. everybody's got a hidden agenda, especially in this fucking town. Yeah. I had a guy go off on me online six months ago because he wanted a career. He wanted help with his career and I wouldn't give it to him. So he went off online about where's that guy today? He ain't doing comedy because he was looking for his hand out. I see them coming before they get here. Because I know what it is to love comedy. I know what it is to be a criminal. I know what it is to really love comedy. So when you you just you know ask, acting around like a spaz, you know, and saying and spitting shit out, I know you're not putting the work in. We know when you're putting the fucking work in. Where is he today? Gone. Right. Yeah. Gone because he was looking for a fucking handout. Yeah. But he made me seem like the bad guy. I'm not the bad guy. I help all my fucking colleagues. I try to help you as much help as you deserve. Just because you stroll into town, and you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I want to be your friend. It don't work that way. It's the same way. Exactly. Like this is what this is. People who love it, like like me, I'm I'm dying asleep right now, so I'm probably gonna jet, so I can do my job tonight. What time so, is our show tonight, bro? man? Eight o'clock. I'm glad you told me. Eight o'clock. <laughs> I'm glad you... What date you got coming up, Ali? Um, this weekend I am actually in DC at the DC Improv. I'm recording um my album. That's uh, one of the best places in the world to record now. Yeah, we recording now I'm there. Yeah, eight hundred pound gorilla. Yeah, yeah, doing, yeah, it, doing it. That's a great fucking place. That's yeah. a great place to shoot now. So I'm I'm coming to Houston though. I heard March seventh. I heard March seventh to the ninth. Hopefully I'm around. Will you um Thursday, Friday, Saturday? It's gonna be bananas. I can't wait. I can't wait. To it's been a long time since you've been Yeah, here. yeah, two years. I try to space it out. Yeah. I try to hit Austin one year. I didn't like the dude in Houston. I heard he ain't there no more. Who, what dude? The little dude, the little perverted dude, the manager. I don't know what his fucking name is. <laughs> the one that I they know. signed the I fucking know. thing to get him out of there because he was a you. creepy motherfucker. I know what you're talking about. But Houston's me. You know, I love that fucking place with all my life. Yeah. Bryce to gain some weight down there, dog. I don't know how you stay so skinny and good looking. Man, I don't eat none of that shit they be serving because I, I want to. It smells so good. You know how much, but, they, you know how much they want for gumbo in here at the barbecue joint? A thousand dollars. Twenty one dollars for a fucking bowl. What is it in Houston? Tell them, though. Probably $8. $8. God, $21 for a bowl of fucking gumbo. I'm going to be in Vegas this Friday Friday with Kate Quigley. And Saturday, Tucson, Arizona with my man, Kent Vela at the Fox Theater. Ali, I want to thank you for coming on. I'm, I'm sorry so. that you're tired and uh, whatever, but it's always a pleasure to see you. Now, this is totally my fault. You're still public it's enemy number one. I still love you to death. This is totally my fault. And my you can come ass. on whenever the fuck you want, no, whenever sure you're in town, my brother. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get the, the, um, the complete, the ultimate trifecta. Do Ari, Bert's, yours, Joe's, and Tom Segura, and I think I'll be good on all the podcasts. Are you doing any other podcasts this week? Mm -mm, I just, just you, man. You don't want to do, oh, you're not doing Ari's or nothing like mm -mm, that? Just, just you. Because Bert's in town, too. Bert will be there tonight, too. Yeah, I will talk to him tonight. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm happy to be there tonight. That's, Me, this too. Is a, I'm happy to see you. It's a whole, that. this is not happening team under the new storytelling, unnamed storytelling show. Unnamed <laughs> Lee will be down there doing the open mic. Oh, for sure. With his dad. His dad's probably sleeping. We oh. gave him a sleeping pill. Give him a bong head of sleeping pill and he's, he's just hanging out. He's, he's done. He's done. Oh. He's done. He gave, my, he gave my dad an edible. He gives my dad an edible every time and it gets, he just, he just he's in outer space. And he had to carry him out of Oxnard last night. <laughs> 65 motherfucking years old. He would have done the acid too today. I got some acid. <laughs> he was all over. He was. He excited. was. He was excited. Ali Dick, great to see you. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Man, tonight. don't forget you motherfuckers. I'll see you this weekend. Tucson, Las Vegas, Friday night. Viva. I love you guys. I want to thank Ali. I want to thank the Christ Killer. But most importantly, I want to thank you guys for always supporting the podcast and listening. But I got to talk to you about something, all right? 
One of the most important things we do for our health every day is brushing our teeth, yet most of us don't do it properly. Quip is a better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers. Quip was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and even enjoyable, all right? Me, I love it, and I told you why when we started. Number one, I love traveling with it. It's easy to put away the batteries, the whole thing. Number two, I love the little vibrator for you to let you know every 30 seconds to switch. It's got sensitive sonic vibrations, gentle enough on your sensitive gums. People brush too hard, and some electric toothbrushes are too abrasive. Not quip. It's got a built-in two-minute timer that pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch and a helping guide to full and even clean. Why? Up to 90% of us don't brush for a full two minutes or don't even clean evenly. A multi-use cover mounts to your mirror and unmounts to slide over the bristles for on-the-go brushing. Don't let, you know, all this stuff clutter your sinks. This makes traveling with an electric toothbrush even easier. Quip doesn't require a clunky charger, and it runs for three months on one charge. Three months. That means if I put it in May, you know me, I always recharge, but I'm just letting you know. If you're bad with remembering, three months on one charge. Three out of four of us uh, use toothbrushes with the bristles are all worn out or ineffective. Quip is one of the first electric toothbrushes that is accepted by the American Dental Association that has thousands of verified five-star reviews. So do me a favor. I love Quip. That's why I love them. Now, they're backed over by 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at $25. And if you go to getquip.com right now, slash Joey right now, you'll get your first refill, refill pack for free with the Quip electric toothbrush. That's right. Go to getquip.com slash Joey right now, and you'll get the first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack for free at getquip.com slash Joey. Listen, it's February 21st, and you still haven't gotten your life together. You made all these notes. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to help out. You're going to work out. You're going to go to You haven't done anything. You did it for three days, and you got sick and tired. You're not taking supplements. You're not drinking your little protein powder. You want to get this whole thing resolved? Go to honor.com right now. They're the masters of the pet show. That Mexican chocolate protein powder is tremendous, okay? The one before it, the cocoa, was tremendous also. You got Shroom Tech. You got Shroom Tech of Sport. You got Shroom Tech Immune. And you got the leader, Alpha Brain, Nootropics to, to help you think clear and, and focus. They got a 100% money back guarantee, and you keep the product. That's how much they believe in Alpha Brain. So if you're a little cloudy, if you're a little butts, Alpha Brain might be for you, but it all starts by you going to Onnit.com. You see something on the way that you're checking out? You're pressing church, you get 10% off, delivered right to your house, all right? Who takes care of you like your Uncle Joey? Nobody. I'm giving you electric toothbrush refills, and I'm letting you know about Onnit. I'm as good as it gets. Don't forget about me. I love you guys. I'll see you guys Monday morning, tip-top magoo, ready to go. The rest of you is I'll see you in Vegas, and the other half of you cocksuckers, I'll see at the Fox Theater in Tucson with my man Kent Vela on the drums. Have a great weekend. All right, Lee, kick this fucking mule.